Hello everyone. In this video, I will talk about the main concepts of software defined network. The term software defined is used to refer to many other concepts like automation, artificial intelligence, API, programmability, and many other terms. These terms or words are common now in any network upgrade discussions and they may have different meaning for different groups. My main focus in this video is switching and how these concepts are affecting the way we configure and manage switches. So let's look at different components of, of software defined network. It all starts with the hardware. The hardware in our case is the switch or switches in the campus or in the branch. These switches were managed by network engineers using CLI or command line interface. For years, network engineers depend on CLI to configure and monitor switches and this CLI was accessed using console cable or Telnet SSH to the switch. With more features added to the operating system of the hardware, organizations decided to move some of the intelligence and management functions from the hardware to the software. The software has many components that makes it the leader in any network. These components include, for example, artificial intelligence, machine language, data analytics, virtualization, and cloud, in addition to many other components that makes the software the leader in any technology advancement we had in the past years. With the movement of intelligence from hardware to software, software became the brain of the network, and this leads to the concept of software-defined network, which means the software is leading any change in the network, and this helps in the advancement of new concepts like automation, for example. Now, there was one challenge in this paradigm or in this architecture, which is programmability. Programmability means to what extent we can manage the hardware from the software and what tools can we use to manage the hardware from the software. Now, the first tool that was discussed is CLI. CLI was designed for a human to read different command lines, to read the output and to understand the output. It was not designed for machines. There was another tool like, for example, SNMB, which used to monitor networks, but in the same time, SNMB can be used to configure limited features of the hardware, but SNMB also has its own complexity and security concerns, and many hardware vendors use SNMB only for monitoring and not for configuration. So the approach that was suggested by software engineers and accepted by software engineers was the concept of Application Programming Interface or API. API was there for many years and was used by software engineers to integrate different applications together and now they wanted the hardware to have the same capability so they wanted to have API interface in the hardware to be easily managed and automated and monitored from the software. Let's take a closer look into the CLI to understand why it is, it is not easy for the software to understand the output of command line. For example, if you want to know the configuration of interface 1124, we can use Shoran to see the configuration of this interface. But as you can see, there are many lines before that command line and the software needs to skip all these commands to reach the interface required for configuration. It is not easy for the software to read these lines and to know where to stop. It may need to go for another command. For example, show interface 1124 to read more values. And in this case, it is the same. It is not easy for the software to read this, these lines and understand the values of different variables without a human describing in details how to find and read these values. So for the software, reading this output from the CLI is very complex and it needs a lot of configuration or scripting. CLI is designed for human 
to read and understand the configuration. It is not designed for applications or programs to read and understand. But still, there are many scripting languages that can convert this ununderstandable text into variables and attributes that software can understand. On the other side, APIs are built in a way to make it easy for programmers and programs to access the required values in very easy and understandable way. So for example, this is the Swagger interface of Aruba. Swagger is a web interface that can help developers to understand different attributes sent or received by Aruba switches using API. So for example, if you want to read interface variables or uh, information for the same interface 1124 using APIs, we can use this Swagger interface to provide us with simple API that we can use to understand the variables. So for example, let me try to send one URL or one API request to the switch for the same interface and try to get the required results. So in my case, I'm trying to send this API request from the Swagger interface of the switch. This API request is git, means it is mainly to read information. I will discuss APIs in more details in next videos, and I will discuss different methods like git, post, and put, and also I will discuss different data format like JSON and XML. So for now, you need to know only that Aruba is using RESTful API, and the data format used by Aruba is JSON format that you will see in this sample API. So for example, I want to send the API request to Aruba switch asking for information about the same interface 1124. So now I can submit this API request. This Swagger interface gives me exactly what request was sent and what information were received from this request. So for the same interface 1124, I was able to get all details in a well-organized way. So I have the variable name here, then column, and then the variable value. So for any programmer, it is e very easy to understand this format and to use it in his programs. So this format is very readable and understandable by software engineers and by programs and softwares to build upon in this information and use it in their automation or software managed networks. So this is the idea of API and this is the difference, the main difference between API and CLI. API gives the information in a way that's readable for the software. On the other side, CLI provides the information in a way that's readable for a human, but not readable for the machine. This format is readable by human, but it needs a lot of processing and a lot of scripting for the software to understand. And this process is very slow in some cases. So if the program needs to do multiple functions, it will be very slow doing this using the CLI. On the other side, API uses a language and attributes that are readable by the software and can be easily used in any program and software without a lot of processing or formatting. So this is why API is preferred on top of CLI. So this was a very high overview of different components of the network with main focus on programmability and why APIs are preferred over CLIs by network engineers and software developers. In the coming video, I will discuss more details about CLI and how to build scripts using CLI to automate certain processes. And in the coming videos, I will do the same functions using APIs so you can easily compare between CLI and API and understand different components of scripting when it comes to CLI and API. I hope this video was useful. Thank you for watching and have a great day.